inhabit your praise so praise me every day in the good in the bad oh when you're glad when you're sad or even when your emotions are high and you're mad praise me and I'll raise thee and then you'll clearly see the path to victory for, for I inherit your praise that's how I raise you above your circumstances your weakness look to me cry out to me and then you'll see your path to to victory dwell in me Abide in me, abide in my presence by praising me. Abide in my presence by praising me. And restoration will come, and healing will come, and strength will come, and my grace increased and bondages you'll be from them you'll be released abide 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 dwell in me abide abide take time with me do it alone do it in a group do it before others and do it before me rest in me rest in my presence dwell in me I'll lead you always to victory learn to be still where not a word is spoke for I'm still ministering life for I'm still ministering strength for in my presence is fullness of joy in my presence is glory and honor and strength. Receive of my strength. Even when I don't say a word, but my presence is manifested, dwell in my presence and absorb my strength. Receive of my strength, for you cannot do it alone. You cannot do it alone. You cannot do it alone. But there's strength and health. There's power from my Throne. and you're not alone you're not alone you're not alone I love you deeply and I look in on your life with deep interest from my eternal throne know that you're not alone you're not alone you're not alone you're not alone and your heart is my eternal home says the spirit of the living God hallelujah amen praise God before we get into the message the Lord put Jeremiah 29 11 on my heart verses through verse 13 hallelujah and here it reads the King James says for I know the thoughts that I think towards you so God is thinking about you says the Lord thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope amen that word thoughts in the Hebrew is also translated to the word is also it also means plans and some translations read, for I know the thoughts. Some, and some translations read, I know the plans. The Amplified Bible reads, for I know the thoughts and plans 
that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. Verse 12 says, then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Does God have all your heart? Are you hungry for him with all your heart? Amen? Amen. With how much? All. all. God has already given us his all through, through his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. We sinned against Jesus. We sinned against the Father. We sinned against the Holy Spirit. And yet the Son of God laid his life down for us to be the redemptive, sacrificial lamb for the sins we committed against him. He's already proven, I've got you. I'm giving you my all. Amen? And so he says, will you give me your all? You know, the Bible says in Psalm 22, 3, that God inhabits the praises of Israel. Well, we're God's people now. God, he, that he inhabits our praises. And that word means to abide, to, con to continue, to dwell. It's a place where God manifests himself in our praises. Amen. And we have, you have wonderful opportunities in this anointed praise and worship where, I mean, they're not in a rush here. And they just dwell in God's presence. And God inhabits that. And God says you can abide in that. And, and in that manifested presence of God, I mean, he's just taking care of all kinds of business in your life. In fact, in Psalm 133, verse 1, it says, How good and pleasant it is for, for, you know, for brethren to dwell together in unity. That word dwell is the same Hebrew word as Psalm 22, where it says God inhabits. Amen? So you come together to dwell in unity, for example, in praise and worship, and God is there. And the Bible says in verse 3, there he commands the blessing. So you want the blessing, and that blessing manifests in, in many ways, including deliverance, breakthrough from addictions, you know, you know, or you need wisdom in your life, relationships, breakthroughs in careers, and education, in ministry, whatever you need. God, he says, I inhabit your, your places. I abide there. I dwell there. I continue there. David, at one time, he said, I'll, you know, I'll, bless, the Lord, lo I'll bless the Lord at all times. First he talked, his, his praise shall what? Continually be in my mouth. Amen. In other words, I'm going to praise God no matter what the circumstance, no matter what the situation, no matter how long it takes. Amen. Sometimes we get bad reports about people we care about. Well, us getting into stress and unrest, distress, upset, depressed, that's not going to cut it. But us getting in God's presence and getting the mind of Christ on how to get refreshed and strengthened and, and to be a blessing to maybe those we care about, that's, that's a key thing. Amen? I know this isn't the outline. Maybe we'll get to that or we, maybe we won't. We'll see. Amen? But God abides in our praise. Amen? In fact, he says over in James chapter 1, count it all joy amen count it all joy when you're in trials maybe for some of you like in the all the way house i mean it's a trial just every day where you have to crucify the flesh of things you used to do amen but god can abide with you he already lives inside of you if you're genuinely born again but guess what he wants to manifest himself on the inside and on the outside. Amen? And, you know, again, seize every moment of God's manifested presence. And I look forward, one of the reasons I look forward to ministering here, because I know that before I get up here, God is manifesting himself. These folks, they pray, they take time to rehearse, and, and, and prayers covering them, others praying for them. And, I mean, what a tr phenomenal way to begin the service. You know, this isn't the only time of ministry in the service when, I'm, when whoever's ministering the Word. No, that is ministry. Giving, leading us to minister to the Lord. And the Bible says those who wait upon the Lord 
shall renew their strength. Amen. As you minister unto him, he's going to minister back to you. And some of y'all been here a while. You know that others that are new. Hey, this is a foreign language. But guess what? God has a way of just teaching you this foreign language pretty quick. Holy Ghost download. Divine revelation. Boom. Just dropping things in your spirit. All of a sudden you're just catching things pretty quick. Amen. Amen. I know I got a grandson that got filled with the Holy Ghost back in July. He's you know, getting ready to go into his senior year. He's a senior now. And all of a sudden he got filled with the Holy Ghost. And God just, I just noticed things are quick, coming quicker to him. Just quickening on the inside. He's just catching it so much faster. Amen. If you've not been filled with the Holy Ghost, you need that. Because the Holy Spirit is a spirit of revelation. He gives revelation of this word. And if you're full of the spirit, guess what? You're full of the revelator. If you'll stir up that gift. Amen. Praise God. Amen. God is good. So just a, maybe that's just a little short exhortation commercial break. To take full advantage of everything that's going on with this ministry and with the emphasis on this service, these services as well. Amen. Praise God. You're not here by accident. You are here on purpose. Whose purpose? God's divine purpose. Amen. Amen. And I'm not sure of all the pipelines and channels and circumstances it brings <clears throat> individuals, for example, to all the way house, but and then the others who attend here, praise God. But however you got here, it was God's hand. <clears throat> because it's God's plan. And you're God's woman and you're God's man. Okay. Amen. And in Christ, we can all stand. Okay. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <clears throat> Amen. Now in my notes, I have read, hear, obey, and then prosper in your way. Read, hear, obey, and then prosper in your way. How many want to prosper? In your life. Amen. I'm not just talking about finances. I'm talking, how many of you know prosperity in Christ is far more than that? For example, in 3 John 2, it says, Beloved, I wish, some translations say, Beloved, I pray that you would prosper and be in health even as your own, your soul prospers. So that's the key thing. What's going on in the, that mental, emotional realm of your life? After you're born again, you need to begin to grow, prosper in that that's the soulish part of your being. A renewed mind, restored soul, restored emotions, all of that. Amen. My first verse here is Joshua 1.8, New King James Version. It says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. But you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then God will make you prosperous. No, it says for then who? Who? Turn your neighbor and say who? And then answer. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. So say this with me. I have a part in my success and my prosperity. I have some responsibility. My first major point here is meditate defined in Joshua 1.8. So we just read the verse and then this word meditate in Strong's Concordance, it's a word that means to ponder. Many of you already knew that, you know, roll it over in your mind, think upon it, etc. But it's a word, imagine we got that already. It also means to speak study, talk, and utter. So study God's word. But also it says what? Speak, talk, utter. Amen? Going back to Joshua 1, 8, it says this book of the law shall not depart from your... We got to speak it. Turn to your neighbor and say, I got to speak it. Amen? Now just think on, oh man, that's a, that's a, what a nice thought. What a nice scripture you're saying in your mind. No, you got to speak it. Speak that word. Turn to your neighbor and say, speak that word. Speak that word. Amen. Don't, don't keep speaking the problem. Speak the word of God. And either you're going to do it or you're not. And therefore, you're either going to see the results or you won't. Amen. If we will follow the principles of Joshua 1, 8, obey those instructions, we will prosper in everything God wants us to do. 
Let's take a closer look at some key principles, key instructions in Joshua 1 8. Read. To have followed, to, to have followed the instructions of God's word in Joshua 1 8, the word had to first be read. Amen. In ancient times, most people did not have the entirety of God's word, so it was read aloud in public places. Read aloud, you know, read it aloud to yourself, read it aloud to others, because that is how faith comes. Romans 10, 17 says what? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the problem. The world news, the latest buzz on social media. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Say, I must hear the word of God. And I must hear the word of God. And I must hear the word of God. Yeah, 1 Timothy 4.13 in the New King James says, Till I come, give attention to reading, exhortation, and doctrine. That's what Paul, the Apostle Paul, told Apostle Pastor Timothy. The Amplified Bible says, Until I come, devote yourself to public reading of Scripture to preaching and to teaching the sound doctrine of God's word. Yo, God said, God said through Paul, public reading, Timothy. Why? Because not everybody had a whole, had a Bible. Not everybody had portions of scripture. Thank God what we have today. Amen. We have the full counsel of God's word. In Revelation 1, 3, in the Amplified Bible, the classic version says, blessed, happy, to be envied is the man who reads aloud in the assemblies. The word of this prophecy, talking about that whole book of Revelation, and blessed, happy, to be envied are those who hear it, who hear it read and who keep themselves true to the things which are written in it. So it's not enough to hear it. We got to heed it. We got to do it. Amen. Heeding them and laying them to heart. Laying them where? For the time for them to be fulfilled is near. And that was written a couple thousand years ago. So how much nearer is the fulfillment of those things now? The ESV reads, blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy. The NRSV says, blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of the prophecy. Praise God. And then one more translation, the Living Bible says, if you read this prophecy aloud to the church, and it goes on from there. You know, the, the full canon of scripture wasn't put together till around 380 AD, somewhere in the late in the fourth century. And I, now I'm not going to read through all this, but one of the points I have at the bottom of what I have in this section is the Bible has been translated into thousands of languages, but there are still many languages in the world that do not have a complete translation of the Bible. Some estimates suggest that there are over 700, 7,000 languages in the world and that fewer than 700 of these have a complete Bible translation. If you have a Bible or a Bible app, hold it up real quick. Just hold it up and say, I am privileged, I am blessed so I'm, because I have my own copy of the Word of God. I go to places in the world. I've been to 32 countries so far and there, I, sometimes I get out to tribes and certain tribes speak certain dialects of different languages. For example, I've been to Ethiopia, 80 languages and dialects. And there's not, you know, there's not the Bible in every dialect. Some of those people can't even read. Amen? How many of y'all can read? No, no, don't put your hands up because it might be somebody who can. I don't want to, but, okay. I don't, yeah. But you get my point. Amen? Rhetorical. How many of y'all can read? Rhetorical question. You know, in other words, don't put your hands up. Amen? Well, God can help you that. I've met people in my travels that God supernaturally taught some of them how to read. They really wanted to read. And the Lord said, just start opening your Bible. One gentleman told me he was just, <clears throat> he, he's, the Lord said, just sound out the words by the letters. He said, you know your alphabet. We'll just start with that. And he started and took him a little bit. But the more he did it over time, the better he got. Until he, the Holy Spirit taught him how to read. Because with God, all things are possible. Amen. Do you think reading the Bible is important? Yes. Amen. Amen. 
the Holy Spirit thought it was. He taught, the, taught these individuals how to read, even though they had no school education for it. Read and read again. Revelation 1.3 says, Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. This word readeth in Strong's Concordance is a word that also means to know again. What does know again sound like? You're being reminded. Amen? Even though we may know it, sometimes we need to be reminded. Sometimes we know it, but still sometimes we blow it. And God says we need to be reminded. Amen? That just came up in my spirit. Amen? In the early days of my salvation, we were reminded of Jesus' return, the great tribulation, etc., pretty often. In fact, I got saved, I guess on the tail end of a lot of churches still preaching fire and brimstone. I was a college kid, I was at Southern University, and that was good. Because, you know, Southern's known for its parties, or at least it was back then, I don't know about now. And so, that was so good. You know, you're, you're in your teen, late teen years, away from parental supervision for the first time and your life can go all kinds of different ways and I went I went to college not saved but I got saved in college and thank God that there were constant reminders you know Jesus could return any moment and we had those movies came out back in then thief in the night distance thunder and all them kind of movies and in fact we used to show them on campus you know I was part of a singing group called revival and so we we would introduce the the time with a song or two then play that movie and had everybody's attention but we were constantly on alert is Jesus coming it created urgency in us to share our faith with others as well not just to live right but urge others to get right amen Second Peter 3 1 says this second Peter 3 1 beloved I now write to you this second epistle in both of which I stir up your pure minds by way of reminder say reminder that you may be mindful say mindful that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord, save, Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days walking according to their own lusts and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. But guess what? He's coming. They're still scoffers, but... He's still coming. Amen? Amen? Amen. Praise God. Amen. Point number three. Here, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Hebrews eleven six. 6. Amen? But to have faith, the word must be heard. Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But let's start at verse 13. Romans 10, 13 says, for whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Say, that's me. How then shall they call on him of whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace. The gospel of what? who bring glad tidings, what kind of tidings? Of good things, amen? But they have not all obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? So then faith comes by, and hearing by the, amen? You know, when I worked at Kenneth Hagin Ministries, you know, Rhema Bible Training Center, Rhema Bible Church for 10 years. When I first got hired, they issued us a devotional Bible. Actually, the next year they issued us another one. It was two different translations. And the first thing we did when we clocked in for work at 8 a.m. was we'd sit down with our work group on Monday and we'd do Sunday and Monday's devotional reading. Then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we'd do those days' readings. And then Friday, we'd do Friday and Saturday's reading. Yes, yeah, so it would take 30 minutes on Monday and Friday, about 15 minutes on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. 350 employees on the clock with the privilege to read the Bible through in a year. So in 10 years, I read through the Bible 10 times. And actually during the f last five years, I started doing it on my own, but I went into work 
And then I'd, you know, I'd take some other translation I found. So I was reading it twice a year in those years. And after that, I continued that. I probably read through the entire word from different translations uh, pr- about 34, 35 times. In fact, one year, well, actually a three-year period, it took me to read through 26, tra- the Bible in 26 translations. That was a three-year project. But I just kept chipping away and chipping away. But it built a great reservoir, a, a great pool on the inside of me of the Word of God. Not that I remembered everything, but it was things the Holy Spirit can bring up in my spirit for when I need it, for me and to minister to others. But, you know, Kenneth Hagin Ministries was so committed to faith comes from hearing and hearing by the Word of God that we would read it, and we read it aloud. So one person will read one column of devotional, uh, you know, Old Testament, New Testament, and Psalm and Proverbs, probably read through, through Psalms and Proverbs twice every year because it would repeat. It was on rinse and repeat kind of thing there. And, uh, but, you know, we'd read it aloud in, in front of all our other coworkers in our department. And we got to them Old Testament names. You know, sometimes we'd feel a little embarrassed because we'd fumble through those names, but we read them anyway. Because faith comes from hearing and hearing by the Word of God. With 350 employees, and like I said, we take, what was that, 30 minutes, an hour and 45 minutes every week to read the Word for 52 weeks times 350 employees. That's, that, that's time we could have been working on other stuff, but that ministry was so committed to the Word of God and hearing the Word of God because faith comes by hearing. Amen. I mean, what an example for us. Amen? Hear the words. Hear the words. Revelation 1-3 says, Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. And as I have here in my notes, in the early years of my salvation, we were reminded of Jesus' return, great tribulation, etc., you know, pretty often. And that inspired us as young college kids to walk the straight and narrow path. Experiencing all of that helped us as college students, young adults, out on our own with no oversight from parents. Those were the days where you heard messages on a regular basis on fire and brimstone. And that's all right, amen. And it created an urgency to live right and to want to reach out and share the gospel with family, friends, and strangers. Amen. We were a little preaching evangelism machines. And every single one of us, no matter what church we're in today, if the church doesn't have an evangelism program, guess who's starting one? You know, with the pastor's permission. Because we just thought this is the normal thing to do. Have ears to hear. Matthew eleven fifteen says, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. The Amplified Bible says, he who has ears to hear, let him be listening. So that means you're tuning in. Lord, is there something you want to say? Like tonight in this message and you know, in the praise and worship, during the exhortation, praise and worship, during the announcements, during the offering, during the altar call. Lord, I have ears to hear. What are you saying? He who has ears to hear, let him be listening and let him consider and perceive and comprehend by hearing. Let him consider. In other words, think about it and perceive. Oh, I see that. Oh, Lord, I see what you're showing me. And comprehend by hearing. Comprehend by what? Be careful how you hear. Be careful how you hear. Mark 4, 24, and the Amplified Bible says, and Jesus said to them, he said to them, be careful what you are hearing. The measure of thought and study, the measure of what? You give to this truth, you hear, will be the measure of virtue and knowledge that comes back to you and more besides will be given to you who hear. Amen. So you could have maybe, you know, 10 people show up in the same program or the same discipleship class or small group or whatever. And some are going to get more out of it based on how they're hearing. How attentive are you? And then, of course, there's the application part. We'll look at that later. Amen. But be careful how you hear. Let me read that verse, that verse again. Mark 4, 24 in the Amplified Bible, the classic version. And he said to them, be careful what you are hearing. In other words, don't have this attitude. Oh, I heard that before. Oh, I can quote 
Joshua 1, 8. Well, I can quote, no, but when it's being ministered now, when it's being ministered tomorrow, when it's being ministered a month from now, a week from now, a year from now, how are you hearing? Are you kind of, you know, have you kind of tuned it out because I already know that? Well, faith comes from hearing and hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. The Bible taught in the parable of the sower of the, of the word, the Bible says the enemy comes in immediately to steal that word sown in somebody's heart. Did you retain everything the first time? Sometimes you need to hear it again and again and again and again and again. I mean, there's things on divine healing and divine provision and a few other areas in my life. I'll feed on that every month. And I've been, I've learned those things for decades now. But guess what? All of a sudden there's a fresh challenge, a new attack or whatever. I need it again. Amen. Sometimes people come out of lifestyles with certain strongholds, addictions, habits or whatever. Guess what? You need to keep reinforcing these truths of God's word on the inside of you over and over and over and over and over. Amen. Yeah. You know, from time to time, I found myself, you know, ministering, you know, to some individuals from different churches or some pastor friends of mine, and they're fine with that. I said, Brother Larry, if you can help them, <laughs> have at it, you know. And there's like one young lady I've been ministering to. She's younger than my daughters, but came from just a horrible situation, you know, gang raped as a teenager and parents were all just a mess, a wreck and shipwreck, witchcraft in the home and all that. You know, married early, had a son, single, divorced, single parent. And just Lord said, be like a spiritual father, but be a friend to her too. So just walking her through some stuff. Amen. And I don't know how many times I've repeated certain things to her. Lord said, just keep doing it because gradually it's sinking in. You know, and, and for her, just having a positive relationship with the male is doing, I mean, sometimes she'll just weep. She said, I just never had a man treat me like you have. And it's long distance. I mean, she's in some other state, you know, so rarely see her, but she, sometimes she'll blow my phone up. And it's like, sometimes like, Lord, it's like, what did I get myself into? Because there's a lady traveling minister that helps her too. And then there's a couple of her pastor and pastor's wife and some others. But she'll go through spurts with different individuals. The Lord said, just be available. Because she's the type that's real honest. She'll let me know when she's blown it with the alcohol or the nicotine. In fact, the Holy Ghost will tell on her at times, say, what do you got in your hand right now? Uh, you know, and all of a sudden she's, you know, one of those. So she knows. God will show me things, but it's to help her and she knows that, amen? But gradually I've just seen more and more progress. And it's not just for her, but it's for a son because God wants to break that cycle, amen? Keep it and obey it. Point number four, keep it and obey it. Revelation 1.3 says this, blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. K-E-E-P. What does that spell? Now, this word in Strong's Concordance means to guard. In other words, once God's given it to you, guard it with all your heart. Don't lose it. Amen. It means keeping the eye upon. Keep looking to that word. Those errors that God's dealing with you about in your life and he's giving you word, insight, instruction from the word of God on it. And, you know, keep the, your eye upon it. Keep going back to it until it becomes reinforced and reinforced so, so deeply that it's as rooted and grounded, established in your heart, in your life. Amen. It says here to prevent from escaping. So you do whatever it takes not to lose that truth on the inside of you. Amen. A fortress or, or full military lines, lines of apparatus. I mean, have a military attitude it's like nobody's taking this from me. No circumstance, no, no power of the devil, nothing, no human being, no flesh, nothing, not even my own flesh is taking this from me, is separating me from this. It means to fulfill a command to detain in custody. I'm holding this word hostage on the inside of me, amen? To maintain, amen? To hold fast. You get the, the, the spirit of what we're saying here? 
Revelation 1.13 from other translations, from various other translations. The AFV says, uh, who keeps the things that are written therein. The Amplified, who keep the things which are written in it, heeding them and taking them to heart. He will bless everyone who hears and obeys. The CJB provided they obey the things written in it. The GW says pay attention to what is written in it because the time is near. The message says all the words written in this book, time is just about up. The, NI, the NIRV says and think everything it says is important. How much is important? And he's putting an emphasis on the book of Revelation here. And think that everything in it is what? Important. The NIV says, take to heart what is written in it. The TS 2009, and guard what is written in it. The Weymouth, and lay to heart what is written in it for the time for its fulfillment is now close at hand. You know, Pastor, Do uh, Pastor Dr. David Youngie Cho, at one time, he, he's, he died a couple years ago, but he had like one of the biggest churches in the world. I know at one time the biggest, but maybe a couple churches in, in Nigeria have rivaled that, that size, but massive church. Like, I can't remember the number of people, but huge. I couldn't remember if it was like 100,000 or a million or whatever, but it was big. It was big, amen? And somebody asked them, what do you attribute to your, the great growth of your ministry? Now, you gotta also remember this. There, that's South Korea, and then there's the DMZ. On the other side of the DMZ is North Korea, and there's this radical dictator leader there. And before him, his father was just as radical and dangerous. And so they got 24-hour prayer going on at Dr. Cho's church. 24 hour and one of the things they, they're, they're standing against as an invasion from North Korea. But this man was a man of prayer. His church was a place of prayer, a house of prayer, 24 seven. And somebody asked, what do you attribute to the great success of your ministry? He said, I pray and then I obey. Now understand prayer is not just asking for things for you and things for other people. Prayer is also receiving communication from God. Allowing God to minister to you, communicate with you, speak to you, impress upon your heart. Amen. And so he said, I pray. In other words, I receive my instructions from God and then I obey. I obey those instructions. Amen. And that should be our attitude. I pray and I obey. Amen. I pray and then I heed what the Lord does say. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. In James 1, it says, but be doers of the word and not hearers only. Because what happens? You deceive yourself. If you hear it, but don't do it. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, don't deceive yourself. Point to yourself and say, don't deceive yourself. <laughs> Amen. But be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For anyone, for if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately, how, how soon? Immediately. immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and does what? Continues in it. And is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This one will be blessed. This one will be what? In what he does. Amen. You know, in Revelation 1, 3, going back to one of the verses we keep going back to, it says, blessed is he that what? Readeth. And they that hear the words of this prophecy and what? Keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. How many want to be blessed? Amen. Like I said, the blessing includes a lot more than just material provision. James 2.18 says here, but someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith by my works. But you believe that there is one God. You do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. So a little sarcasm there to get a point across. But do you want to know, oh foolish man, what kind of man? That faith without works is? Amen. 
So Mr. T would say, I pity the fool. Amen. <laughs> and if you, if you receive faith from hearing the word, but you're not doing the word, who's calling you foolish? God. Amen. But do you want to know, oh foolish man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac, his son, on the altar? Do you see that faith was working together with his works? By works, faith was made perfect. What does that word perfect mean? It means to complete. So if you have faith, but and you say, oh, I believe, I believe, I believe, but you're not acting on it, you have imperfect faith, incomplete faith. That word means to complete, to accomplish, finish, fulfill, make perfect. You have faith that's unfinished. To finish your faith, complete your faith, to perfect your faith, you must act on that faith that comes by hearing the word of God. Thayer's Greek definitions, it means to make perfect, complete, to carry through completely. To carry through how? To accomplish, finish, bring to an end, to bring to an end their goal, bring to a close or fulfillment. James 2.23 says, and the scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness and he was called a friend of God. You see then that a man is justified by works and not by faith only. Likewise, was not Rahab the harlot also justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Amen. So say, my faith must have works. My faith must have corresponding actions to be complete, to reach its fulfillment. Amen. And then I think my getting down to my last point, maybe here. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it says, read, hear, obey, and then you will prosper in your way. Read, hear, obey, and then you will prosper in your way. Again, meditate, which includes hearing the word, do, to do the word, and then you will prosper and have good success. Joshua 8, again, you know, the last part of the verse says, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Amen? Then you will prosper, and yeah, I had, I was, the, all the way house folks are on my heart tonight, I mean, this morning and yesterday as I was preparing this, and then you will prosper in all the way house. Amen? Amen. These principles will help you prosper in your job, career, education, training, marriage, family, health and fitness, finances, ministry service, etc., 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 in every area. Amen? We see, jo we see the Joshua 1, 8 principle in Psalm 1, verses 1 to 3. The King James Version says in Psalm 1, 1, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of the sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. You can say the word of God. And in his law, he meditates. Say, what's that word? Meditates day and night. How often? And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season. When? Say there's a season. Whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does not, whatever he does shall prosper. But if you're not meditating this word and applying the word, guess what? There's not going to be a season. Does that make sense? The word meditate here is the same Hebrew word as in Joshua 1.8. Again, it means to study the word, ponder the word, and speak the word, which includes reading the word. Amen. Psalm 1, 1 from the Amplified Bible, the, the classic version. It says, blessed, happy, fortunate, prosperous, and enviable is the man who walks and lives not in the counsel of the ungodly, following their advice, their plans, and purposes, nor stands submissive and inactive, in other words, being passive and just going along with stuff, in the path where sinners walk, nor sits down to relax and rest. I'm just going to chill with y'all. No, nope, no, nope, bad idea. Horrible idea. Disastrous idea. The worst idea ever. Amen. 
nor sits down to relax and rest where the scornful and the mockers gather. The new amplified version reads, blessed, fortunate, prosperous, and favored by God is a man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, following their advice and example, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit down to rest in the seat of the scoffers, ridiculers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord and on his law, his precepts and teachings. His what? He habitually meditates. How often does he meditate? Day and night. In 2 Timothy 4, 15, uh, uh, instructions are given to meditate. 1 Timothy 4, 15, meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to them. Give yourself how? That your progress, that your what? May be evident to all. That word meditate means to take care of. Revolve in the mind. Imagine but it means to take care of, take care of your business, amen? <laughs> the word meditate, there's Greek definition to, to care for, attend to carefully, attend to how? Every detail, every instruction God has given you, every detail, attend to it carefully. Practice, you gotta put it into Practice to meditate, to devise, contrive, meditative, pondering. Those are some of the other words used there in the English. Notice that there is a blessing on reading the book of Revelation. Revelation 1 3 Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Blessed is he that readeth. The King James says, readeth. The, the, the BBE, Bible in basic English, says a blessing beyond the reader. The, the English Revised Version says great blessings. What kind of blessings? And then the Passion Translation reads, a joyous blessing rests upon the one who reads this message and upon those who hear and embrace the words of this prophecy. For the appointed time is in your hands. Amen. The TLV says, how fortunate is the one. Praise God. So if you've been in the book of Revelation at any point, guess what? You're fortunate. There's a joyous blessing, a great blessing, a blessing beyond the reader. Hallelujah. Praise God. Some of the blessings of reading the book of Revelation, uh, Revelation are that it gives us perspective, clarity, and understanding of the times we're living in. It tells us about the future. It stirs us to walk the straight and narrow path of Christianity. It gives us urgency to reach the lost. It gives us warnings and instructions to the church. It gives us insight into what heaven is like. It gives us more insight on God. It shows how God does things. It tells us about the marriage supper of the land. It tells us about judgments to come, et cetera, et cetera. There's even more than what I listed there, amen? You know, I have some pastor friends. There's a pastor, Robert Little, who lives in Gretna and preaches down in, what's that place called? Davant. You, you take the Bell Chase Ferry from the West Bank, you know, cross the Mississippi, then drive another 40, 45 minutes south from there. He's down in, the, you know, uttermost parts of the earth. But he hosts a prophetic conference. He has a guest speaker come in once a year. He invites other churches because he just feels like, you know, people need to be up to date on the, the book of Revelation in times and all that. Eschatology is, is we were taught in Bible school. That's the name they gave, they have for it. And uh, so he does that every year as a service to the body of Christ, not just his church, but invites other churches to join in on that. He has a guest speaker who's up to date on all the current stuff, world events and technology and all that. He ties all that in. I've sat in on that before. And I have a pastor friend named Albert White. I don't know if he still does this, but for several years, for years, he would have the same guest speaker come to his church and minister on that. Amen. When I was at Bible school at Rama, it was a two year Bible college. Now you can go three or four years. But back when I went there, you had, I think we got 60 courses in two years. And one of them was eschatology. Eight weeks, three times a week for eight weeks, a course on this, on end times or eschatology. It's not something I've taught on. I've taught like 41 Bible courses and seminars and Bible colleges and conferences over the years. And 
and of course sermons on many more things, but I've done about 41 different subjects in these schools and stuff, but that's not something the Lord's had me cover yet. Amen. I'd have to do a whole lot of learning. I got an A on the course in Bible school, but getting an A on a, in a class and being equipped to teach it, that's two different levels of understanding. Amen. Kudos to those who God's grace to do that. Amen. All scripture is profitable and beneficial. How much scripture? 2 Timothy 3.16 in the King, New King James says all scripture. So even Leviticus, all, them, all those ceremonies for sacrifices and washings and all that, even that is profitable. Amen. All scripture is God breathed, given by divine inspiration and is profitable for instruction, for conviction of sin, for correction of error and restoration to obedience. So it's not just the, con the correction, it's about the restoration, amen? For training in righteousness, learning to live in conformity to God's will, both publicly and privately. Both how? And, 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 and God is always, amen, watching, amen? Behaving honorably with personal integrity and moral courage. Behaving how? Yeah, and that's something that's an issue in the body of Christ. Amen. We talk bad about those in authority. The Bible says pray for them. Sometimes we're talking bad about other ministers and churches. God says, if you feel like they're missing it, pray them. Love covers a multitude of sins. Amen. Love bears all things. Amen. Something the body of Christ needs to grow up in. Amen. It says be, behaving honorably with personal integrity and moral courage. The courage to say no to things that are wrong. Amen. Moral courage so that the man of God may be complete and proficient, outfitted and thoroughly equipped for every good work. Amen. Would you bow your heads? Amen. Well, Father, we just thank you for the utterance you gave us tonight. We know we covered a lot of material in a short amount of time, but I thank you, Lord, that they have the notes here, Lord God. And Father, your word says, whatever the Holy Spirit teaches us, he will bring to our remembrance. So we just thank you, Lord, for quickening, bringing to the remembrance every part of this that an individual might need. And, and no matter what the season of their life, Lord God, we just thank you in those seasons. You're, you'll bring these things, these things to their remembrance, Lord God, so they can be a doer of the word and not a hearer only, so they can prosper in every area that you've designed for them. And they can have good success in every area that you have for them. I just hear the Lord saying this. Be still and know my love. I love you so. Be still where you sit or stand. I reach down with my tender hand be still and hear in your heart my love whispers that not I now impart be still I'll envelop you with my presence and restore and refresh you for it's by my power, it's by my might. I'll strengthen your will. I'll give you divine insight so that you can overcome all you struggle with. By my grace, this precious gift. Be still, your heart I will lift. I will lift, I will live, be still and know I love you, I love you so, I love you so. With every head bowed and every eye closed, if there's someone here who needs to give their heart to Jesus, you know, you're, it's not clear to you. It's not sure to you that if you were to die, you'd go to heaven and you would not go to hell. If you're ready to make a surrender of your life 
or maybe you need to rededicate your life. Maybe you made that surrender at one time and you say, oh Lord, I need to rededicate my life. I need to recommit my life. If you need prayer for either one of those, just lift your hand. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Just lift your hand. We want to minister to you. I see that hand. Praise God. I see that hand. And there might be somebody online or some buddies online to need ministry along these lines. Well, if you raise your hand, just come on up here, please. I want to pray for you. And I'll use you as a point of contact. If there's anybody, anybody, praise God. Don't be ashamed. Don't be embarrassed. God gives more grace to the humble. Amen. Praise God. And if you need to pray this prayer online or wherever you're at, just repeat after me. Say, Almighty God, Almighty God. I surrender my life to Jesus as Lord and Savior because I believe He is the Son of God and He was crucified at Calvary, nailed to a cross for my sin against Him. But after He died, He was raised to life. He was resurrected, raised to heaven, and He is seated. He is, and He is seated at your right hand. He is seated at your right hand on the throne. I love you, Lord. Forgive me. I repent of my sin. I turn to you in my heart and in my manner of life. In Jesus' name, I thank you for restoration. I thank you for refreshing. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Okay. Well, just say this. Say, Almighty God, I need you in my life. I turn to you now. I surrender my life to have the life that you have for me. I acknowledge that Jesus is the Son of God who died for me, but you raised him to life and he is on his throne at your right hand. And I thank you for forgiving me, washing me clean of my sin. I'm a child of God. I'm born again in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for refreshing, restoration. For your word says, repent, so that the times of refreshing can come from the Lord. So we thank you for refreshing, restoring her in every single way. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. You be seated. You're welcome. Amen. Praise God. I'm available for any, for any other kind of prayer needs, but I'm also ready to turn it over to Pastor Jeannie. However, y'all feel directed. Praise God. Thank you, Pastor Larry. Well, that concludes our service tonight. We want to thank everybody online. Thank everybody who showed up tonight. We bless you, and we're excited to have you. Great word. I'm a word person, so it's what transformed my life, you know, because I had terrible thought processes. And so the word of God, if you'll do what he said and dig it out, man, the, the God will really renew your mindset, and he'll teach you things that you didn't know. He'll, he'll open it up to you. You know, when I was young, I didn't understand any of the Bible. Your pastor and I, when we were teenagers, had a like eight by 14, one of those kind you like whoop somebody up with it. Yeah, on the coffee table. Where every now and then we get desperate, we go hit a psalm, you know. <laughs> but, you know, even at that time, God's word was bringing us comfort. And we didn't even really know him. So once we did become born again, you know, just really digging it out, he started opening our eyes to stuff. You know, you don't understand until he does it. So just relax and go with it. Amen. All right, we love you and we appreciate you. Thank you guys. Y'all have a great night. You can join our social media community, watch full broadcasts, sign up for our daily devotional, and much more at miracleplace.org.